Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Pranav Bijwe, and I will be uh, presenting to you uh, the, a content delivery network on OpenRAP using uh, Raspberry Pi. So uh, I'll talk a bit about digital inf uh, education and information for all first. So the process of imparting education has changed a lot over the years. Uh, think, back, uh, think back to the time when you were in school. Uh, to provide a personal experience, when I was in the first standard, we used to learn on chalk and blackboards. Then in the fifth standard, we switched to whiteboards and as a child, I kind of found it fascinating. Then in the seventh standard, for the first time, I saw projectors and computers in every classroom. And that kind of changed the way I, I learned in my school. So today, we can supplement uh, our traditional education by, and we can, expand our, uh, we can expand our horizons by taking advantage of the internet, which is a vast repository of information and knowledge, which is at our fingertips and only a click of a button away. The, the sixth pillar of the Digital India campaign, which is a campaign launched by the government of India, stands for information for all. And I feel it stands uh, above the rest as this phenomena of digital education has a potential to not just enhance the learning experience for students, but also the teaching experience for teachers. So making uh, educational content uh, easily accessible is a step in the right direction, uh, is, is, a, is a step in the right direction of achieving information for all. And this can be done using digital libraries, which I will uh, describe, uh, uh, which I'll describe in the slides. So uh, what are digital libraries? Uh, and why do we need them? So digital libraries provide us with a heightened amount of choice. Uh, digital libraries give us access to multiple contents with a potentially infinite number of resources and selections at hand. The main limit of uh, physical libraries is that uh, physical books actually take up space. And it's very time consuming to find the resource that you actually need. You, are, you need to walk up to it and you need to locate the uh, book that you actually need uh, to proceed with your uh, studies. So the next point is building a heritage for the next generation. Online libraries help uh, the scientific society since they act as a reservoir for storage of in, uh, important research data and information and findings. So for a very long time, uh, physical records of scientific studies and researchers have had to live with a critical issue. It's that they were destroyed or lost. Uh, but today, thanks to digital libraries, the online copies of studies and researches can be protected and collected in a safe space. And we can create a virtual heritage of information for future generations as they are not lost, with, uh, as, as was the case with physical, uh, research, physical uh, documents. Uh, the next point is instant access to educational content. So as long as uh, an internet connection is available, digital libraries are accessible anywhere and at any given time. So, uh, and using any simple device like your smartphone, your tablets, and even PCs. Uh, the solution that, we will, that I will be talking about, which is OpenRAP, it, uh, it does not even require constant access to uh, the internet, which I will cover uh, later. And the next point is fighting against uh, deterioration. So digital storage of books and above all audios solve the problem of uh, deterioration. In traditional libraries, audio cassettes and tapes are shared among, uh, are shared among many students. And, and this poses a problem of uh, deterioration as they, are played on, um, as they are played many number of times. So thanks to digitizing of, material, of these materials, it is possible to access these contents as many, uh, as many times as the student needs without any deterioration of the uh, digital file. So, and which is also very convenient and safer to use. Then the next point is ease of access. So digital libraries make it easier to find what you're looking for. Usually presented as an interactive GUI, uh, people don't need to spend much time in looking for the resources that they need. Uh, a search functionality will allow, uh, will allow you to get exactly what you need in a quick and easy manner. So now I will uh, basically uh, talk about OpenRAP, which is, uh, OpenRAP stands for Open Resource Access Point, uh, which is uh, an offline content distribution platform for course content websites like Akestep and Megashala. Uh, it is an open source software which aims to provide uh, open, offline, cheap, and easily accessible uh, content delivery network. 
it is a user user friendly platform which can work on low cost devices such as uh, raspberry pi and the scope of the project will also deal with uh, open wrap uh, uh, working on the raspberry pi a brief overview overview on uh, of the working of open, open wrap so open wrap is basically a software which will which will run on a linux linux based image on the raspberry pi so as soon as the raspberry pi with the bundle software boots up it will act as a wifi hotspot which can be accessed by smartphones tablets and pcs uh, open wrap will uh, serve as an interactive interface for requesting course content once the course content is requested and downloaded so there is no need for you to access the course content uh, again and again by uh, accessing the internet uh, it is basically so it is basically uh, cached for offline use so the content retrieval for the uh, course content will take place from websites like ekstep and mega shala and among many other websites which i will go over later uh, to briefly uh, go over content delivery networks in the context of open wrap uh, as you know content uh, cdn stands for content delivery networks uh, cdn is actually an umbrella term uh, spanning different types of content delivery services uh, it is a distributed network of services and their data centers so in the context of open wrap uh, the open wrap uses uh, the concept of open offline localized cdn so as the phrase suggests uh, open is open open source offline does not require uh, an internet access and localized is basically localized to your uh, educational institution the goal basically for a cdn is to provide spatially relative uh, data to end users with high availability and high performance so if you want to download uh, an ubuntu image you won't you, you won't be downloading it from a server which is located in netherlands you rather you will be downloading it from uh, a server which is located in india itself so that is basically the concept of a cdn uh, to briefly go over the block diagram of the project uh, so and to expand a bit more on the working of open wrap uh, so the open wrap software will work on top of a linux based image uh, which uh, which will run on the raspberry pi so as the, as the device is powered on it will act as a hotspot to which devices can connect to and it will serve a captive portal or basically a default web page which uh, which you can uh, see and interact with it is its end user functionality and interactions will be uh, handled by node js uh, next the local database as the name suggests will serve as a database for storing basic user details like attendance records permissions uh, to the admin panel and things like course content which is already available offline the open wrap device will connect to the internet via the ethernet port for the purposes of fetching the course content so if you want to request the course content the uh, e the open wrap device will basically fetch it from websites like ekstep and mega shala and uh, which is uh, via the use of plugins which are, will be uh, written in golang uh further uh, support for websites like uh, iit bombay x and spoken tutorial will also be covered this is basically the device specifications uh which was uh, for the scope of this project is raspberry pi uh a disclaimer uh the current build of open app only supports uh, raspberry pi model 3b and not 3b plus which is shown in the uh, slide these are the software specifications uh, you can briefly go over them now i will basically demonstrate uh, demonstrate the working of the open wrap software and the open wrap interface so uh, right now the raspberry pi device is powered on and it is acting as a wifi hotspot so uh, this laptop is connected to the uh, open wrap uh, hotspot as you can see here uh, and this is basically the captive portal which shows up uh, it is the default web page which will show up when you uh, connect to the uh, raspberry pi uh, now uh, i'll i'll basic i'll briefly go over the admin panel okay uh, so this is the admin panel which will open up uh, i'll just log in and show you the basic overview of the interface okay so th these are the uh, this is basically the device statistics of the uh, device that it's uh, working on which is the raspberry pi here uh, 
Here you can see uh, the users which are connected to the uh, device right now. The system, uh, basic information like system uptime, uh, the firmware, uh, for the firmware version, uh, internet connectivity as it's not connected to the internet right now. Uh, CPU usage, RAM usage, disk space, uh, the SSID. Uh, then in, in the in the user panel, you can add uh, users and edit their permissions. So you can restrict access to certain elements of the admin panel. Then uh, here the upgrade uh, the upgrade panel basically allows you to upgrade the firmware of the uh, of the open wrap device as the updates are released. Then uh, here, here we have the file management uh, section where you can upload files, which can be viewed uh, for which can be viewed offline, basically. Uh, then modify SSID, which is you can change the SSID of the hotspot. Then uh, modify captive portal, uh, which is uh, the the default web page which shows up when a device connects to the uh, open wrap device, uh, the, when any device connects to, connects to the open wrap hotspot. Uh, then, yeah, that's basically the admin panel, and uh, and uh, this is the GOK portal, uh, which allows you to view the uh, uh, files which are uh, basically stored offline, and you can view whatever course content that is stored uh, directly through your browser, and you don't really require a special app to view the course content. So that's. Uh, that's basically uh, it for the demonstration. Um, next, I'll briefly go describe the uh, functions of OpenRap. So it will basically serve as a uh, digital library for educational institutions, uh, which, which is something I talked about in detail uh, earlier. It will have admin functionality like maintaining attendance records and academic records. The course content which that you request will be downloaded once and stored offline. So there is no need of accessing it again and again and uh, straining uh, the bandwidth. So uh, OpenRap will also support multiple uh, websites for requesting course content like uh, Eggstep, Megashala, uh, IIT Bombay X, and Spoken Tutorials. Uh, you can access uh, OpenRap content from any device. So there is ease of access. Uh, you can uh, use your smartphone, tablets, or PCs. To briefly go over the future scope of this project, an update to the Linux based image uh, which runs on the Raspberry Pi will allow, uh, will allow us to take advantage of uh, better hardware which is uh, the Raspberry Pi model 3B plus. Then uh, support for Indian languages, the current software uses English system wide. Uh, support for Indian, langu Indian languages will make it easier for, to, access, to access course content in your own native language since uh, spoken tutorials is actually an initiative which supports a vast number of uh, Indian languages uh, in, your, in various in na native Indian languages. Then uh, support for better hardware will also allow uh, more number of con concurrent users to connect to the uh, open wrapped uh, device. Currently, uh, only 12 uh, users can connect to the device since it's uh, working on a Raspberry Pi model 3B. So the, as soon as the Linux based image is uh, up updated, it will allow uh, it will allow us to take advantage of better hardware and therefore it will allow uh, more concurrent users to connect to it. Then support for course content uh, websites through plugins, which is, uh, which is basically IIT Bombay X, EDX, Spoken Tutorials. They will be supported through plugins which will be written in Golang. So, and this will, be, uh, this will be taking place in the future. Uh, so one of the key points which I uh, briefly skipped was uh, the better documentation on the project GitHub page. So the existing OpenRap project, uh, pro project GitHub page does very poorly when compared with the recommended community uh, standards for open source projects, which is in terms of documentation. So I, I will strongly re recommend uh, everyone to check out this website called opensource.guide. Uh, .guide is the uh, domain extension. Uh, I, I will also like to take this opportunity to talk about the importance of documentation and reiterate uh, Professor Fatak's point on uh, documenting everything that you do while contributing to an open source project. So uh, people, people will basically judge your project based on the documentation you provide. 
it is what sets it basically sets a great project apart from a mediocre project uh, it uh, better documentation will also provide a low barrier of entry for so that anyone can study the documents and start contributing to your project so uh, considering projects with no documentation if some third party would like to contribute to a project and there's no documentation to refer to people will probably get stuck at baseline steps like setting up your uh, project so uh, it is very important to uh, set up uh, have basic baseline documentation for simple steps like setting up your project and this was basically what uh, la lack of documentation is basically what was what held us back while contributing to the project uh, there was very little documentation and we ended up working more on the documentation side than the actual development on the uh, project so that's what uh, that's one of the uh, key concluding points that i wanted to make and uh, to wrap up this presentation open rap is an open source software which will provide a localized cdn in educational institutions and it will enable students to acquire knowledge just from not just from books but also from a digital library it will act as a store for large uh, large course content files which can be accessed offline without repeated accesses to the internet so and it is it is a step towards achieving information through all because uh, informa information for all because of its economical value and ease of use thank you what are the features of 3b plus which are different from 3b if so basically better uh, better processor uh, better processor and more ram more important than the processor being better will it permit larger number of students to connect yes sir obviously because that is what would be required i don't know because uh, in 3b hmm. uh, the wifi was built in the processor and there are a separate uh, i see. so it will be yeah. perhaps more powerful that is one the second point is i appreciate that it will work as a cdn which is useful but can you also have a mechanism by which at least some extremely simple interaction both between the students who are connected and the students and a teacher could happen such as for example conducting a multiple choice quiz or giving some input or collaborating so since the design of uh open rap is quite modular right. uh, you can we can implement basically anything that we can imagine using plugins and uh, the open rap uh, development team has provided a template for plugins and basically how to implement them so that is an activity we should undertake so you can run a simplified version of let's say iit bombay x courses or x step courses where the students can uh, contribute secondly have you tried to see what is the lowest cost uh, telephone device which works comfortably with this your smartphones a range of price from 6000 to 60000 so at the lower end have you tested so any sir any device which can support a web browser with javascript functionality can basically access uh, the reason i am worried about the cost is that we are going to talk about large numbers I don't know whether you have ever worked on these statistics. Do you know how many children in India are there for school-going age? Just some guess. More than three hundred million. That is about thirty crore. Okay, if you have to equip every child with a device. which cost let us say 6000 rupees then we are talking about 1 lakh 80000 crores if you can do that at 3000 rupees then the cost comes down to 90000 crores even 90000 crores is large but it appears manageable for this nation as compared to 1 lakh 80000 that is why affordability of technology in this country will always remain of paramount importance unfortunately since it does not affect most of us here we really don't care our iit bombay's attempt at akash project was essentially to get a very low cost device 
Secondly, an important point about this open wrap uh, digital uh, content distribution is that invariably the digital content distribution that we think of is a projector where you project presentations, a PC as a server where you have nice PowerPoint. Okay. The cost of all this equipment plus the cost of Microsoft licenses of PowerPoint alone okay, will make it impossible for schools to ever consider having this in multiple classrooms. Forget multiple classrooms, even in one classroom. There are six lakh villages in the country. There are more than a million schools. So you can imagine, forget the children who need an access device, but consider the school. If the school has to implement the kind of infrastructure that your colleges have, you know, a lab or a classroom like this and so on and so forth, how much does it cost? Let's imagine it is cost, the cost of this infrastructure is 5 lakh rupees. 5 lakh rupees to be spent just for empowering one classroom for 1 million schools. And there is another aspect of it which Nandan told me in my discussions with him. He says, Professor Fadak, forget the amount, but the mechanism to implement. Do you know how your institutes spend on any procurement, 5 lakh rupees? What is the process? You're familiar with tenders, Government of India financial rules. So you have to issue a tender, notify, you have to get bids, you have to evaluate them, assess them. And still, some agency which loses the tender writes to CVC, Prime Minister, etc., saying, Gapla why? Normal tendering process in our institutions, including IITs, take anywhere between four to six months. Can you imagine a school headmaster forgetting all school education, spending time only on the tendering, of which the poor person has absolutely no clue? Whereas this kind of device, if we can manage the cost to be less than 25,000 rupees, what is the magic figure, 25,000 rupees? Any amount less than 25,000 rupees, even if it comes from government grants, can be spent through direct purchase. So that means you are empowering the headmasters of the schools to purchase this 25,000 rupees gadget and set it up in the school classroom you still have to worry about the excess devices. Uh, why uh, I felt this open wrap was an important project, it is still in uh, what you call, let's say, uh, Balyavastas. Yes. In infancy. Uh, yes. But this has the potential of, of changing the complete landscape. And, and think of those 30 crore children always. There is absolutely no other way. Alternately, you decide you don't care. After all, you have struggled and come up, and thanks to your parents, you are well placed. So let them worry about things and let them handle the way they. But that is not how the nation can be built. So that is why this project is important, and I would like to suggest that some of you, at least, or your friends back home in the college, if they are interested, IIT Bombay is going to work on this activity very, very significantly over the next 10 years. Uh, we, we want to make sure that such affordable technologies reach out to the school. It is from that point of view that this is important. But have you tested at least, if there is a two-way communication, then the number of connections that you can hold on Wi-Fi versus when there is only CDN usage? That could be a technical problem there. So anyway, thank you so much for doing this. Sir, and uh, special thanks to uh, Mr. Gaurav Oja for guiding us in the project and Mr. Rajesh Kushalkar for, Kushalkar for mentoring us in the project. Thank you.